ladies and gentlemen, Gary Moore. Thank you. Thank you, Bill Wendell. Hi, friends. One, one small word of warning is that our first guest is a young lady that you don't want to mess around with. She is professionally totally in charge of 2,000 men. She is a guard at the prison of San Quentin, the first female guard. And we will meet her, hear about her story as soon as we meet our panel here on To Tell the Truth. Alan Alda. Peggy Pat. This is the proof final that women's lib is here to stay. Oh. I'm sure you did, couldn't hear what I said backstage, but now let us meet our prison guard. <laughs> Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Wilma Schneider. Number two. My name is Wilma Schneider. Number three. My name is Wilma Schneider. And of course, two of them are not being truthful. One truly is Wilma Schneider, and here is her disarming story. It says here, I, Wilma Schneider, am the first female correction officer at San Quentin Prison. Trained to use a rifle and a Colt revolver, I guard the inmates in the dining room and the recreation areas, as well as from my perch atop the gun tower. At the first sign of a disturbance, I am instructed to blow my whistle. If the disturbance continues, a warning shot is then fired. If that fails to quiet things down, I would then, quote, shoot to harm, unquote. By breaking San Quentin's 121-year tradition of male prison guards, I help provide a more normal atmosphere. Many inmates, however, remain wedded to the past. Indeed, as if not to acknowledge my sex, they call me Willie. <laughs> Signed, Wilma Schneider. <laughs> So, while the three Wilma Willies get settled in, our sponsors no doubt have a word on their own behalf, and then we'll be right back. We have three young ladies across from us. They all say that they are Wilma Willie Schneider, San Quentin's first female prison guard. And let's start the questioning, please, with Alan Alda. Thank you. Number one, uh, what is a fish bull? A new officer. Number two, what do you think a fish bull is? Well, I would say it is an old officer. And number three? A fishbowl is a term used for an officer. I see. Uh, a, number, uh, a number three, uh, do any of the uh, inmates in your uh, prison have knives? No, they're not permitted to carry weapons. <clears throat> um, a number, a number uh, one, have you ever fired your gun or revolver or whatever you have? No, not yet. Just on the train. Not yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Number, uh, number two, have, have you ever had to uh, restrain anyone, or are you in a position to restrain anyone physically? I've, I've only been there a short time, and I uh, haven't had that uh, particular training, uh, not training, but uh, job assigned to me yet. I see, but you, you, number three, would you ever be uh, uh, assigned to uh, uh, be in physical contact with an inmate? Perhaps at a future date, but I haven't yet because I've only been there two months. I see. And that buzzer takes his place to Peggy. Thank you. What do the other guards think of having a woman guard? Did you address the question? Yes, three. I'm sorry. What do the other yeah. guards? Well, there was a lot of controversy when I first came, but now they've accepted the idea. Are you the only woman in, in the prison? I mean, are they, are, are, is it planned to hire more? Well, I don't know what their plans are for future hiring, but at the moment, there's one other one besides myself. At San Quentin? Yes, there are two of us. Thank you. Um, number one, what do they mean by the fact that you provide a more normal atmosphere? 
I think it's because being locked up is abnormal. Yes. And also being without the opposite sex is also abnormal. So we kind of feel like with women around, it might soften some of these kinds of things. Yeah, but I should think it would be very difficult uh, on male prisoners to have one dame there and, uh, you know, she's just a guard. I mean, I should think it would be cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, be, I'm not being funny. I mean it. Don't you think but, that there's that side to it, too? Yeah, they plan on having more. Yeah. I just happened to be the only one of the two. Well, gee, they're going to make it sound as though it's going to be like shrafts. I don't imagine that they're going to make it like that. <laughs> <laughs> number, two, number two, why did you want to do this? Well, number one, the pay. It, it was paid, it's paying much more than my previous job. Also, I felt the work was challenging, more interesting, and it would put me in contact with more men. Well, it sure would, but you can't date them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we go from Peggy to Bill Cullen, please. Yeah, the question of why intrigues me, too. Number three, what did you do before you took this job? I was working with the police department as a dispatcher. And, and why did you make the change I into a prison? There's a great deal of difference, I imagine, between that and your present job. What, what prompted you to make the change? Well, I was offered the position. A friend of mine had suggested that I might do something like this because the salary was much more than I was making. Number, number one, if they were to replace all of the guards, all of the male guards at San Quentin, with women guards, would, they, would an entire staff of nothing but women guards be able to maintain discipline and control in the prison? Are there, could women do all of the jobs that are done in the prison? No. I don't think possible, is that right? Mm -hmm. No. So do you then, number one, get particularly mm -hmm. uh, different assignments or specific assignments? You cannot be assigned to any job there, is that right? Well, it, now we can, but they're reevaluating it, so it may change. Number two, do you honestly think that it's a good idea, a straight question, a good idea to have a, a woman or women guards at a prison? That's yes, I definitely do. Why? Because of, because of the morale factor. Because of the morale factor was number two's answer, and that takes us please to Kitty. Thank you. Number three, what uh, morale help can it be to have a woman in a prison that is obviously not going to be even a friend, much less a companion or a lover? <laughs> what good could it do? Well, the morale, as um, number two said to you, the morale factor is an important thing because these men are in prison conditions that are archaic and our prison systems need to be changed. And also there's one of the problems that we have is the great homosexuality problem. Well, what can you do about that? <laughs> Well, you don't want to answer that. Uh, All right. Uh, number one, what jobs don't you think a woman could do? I think probably the showering of the men and things. Ah, supervising, that sort of thing. <coughs> number two, you said you took the job because there were more men there. Well, what is going to be the outcome of that? <laughs> well, my popularity has increased. I've had many more dates. And, with with uh, whom? With guards, with the officers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I see. Thank you. Number three, what are your living conditions? Do you share a room with the other lady guard or do you have a room by yourself? No, I don't live on the premises. Oh, you I don't. commute back and forth. All right, the bell has rung. That means no more questions. Mark your ballots, if you will, panel. The audience and I will make our own evaluation as to whether it's number one or number two or number three. Our Pay that we pay our team of challengers fifty dollars for each wrong vote. We pay them five hundred dollars if nobody comes up with the real Wilma. Yes. And Alan starts, please. Well, I spent last about a year and a half ago. I spent uh, three weeks in the Utah State Prison uh, uh -huh. as a guest. Of the state? No, I, I was making a movie there, and uh, I found a number of things out about prisons. And one of the things I found out is that while no one is allowed to carry a knife, mm -hmm. almost everybody does. I presume that's true of many prisons. Another thing I found out is that a fish bull is a new officer, and only number one oh. specified it was a new officer, so I vote for number one. So we've got a one showing, and a piggy. Well, you know, I was going to vote for number one. When you asked what a fish bull was, and then he asked the other two, I figured number one had answered it wrong. <laughs> oh, heck. So I voted for number three. <laughs> So the person I'd most like to be guarded by. <laughs> <laughs> a one and a three, and Bill Cullen. 
Well, I voted for number one because I think her answers made a great deal of sense. I still think it's a problem. I wish we had, like, hours to question because yes. I still, frankly, don't think it's a good idea. But what do I know? All righty. So we've got a pair of ones and a three and kitty. Uh, well, they're all very pretty. And I saw a picture of one of them way, way, way away on this tower in San Quentin. And they, it was a pretty lady, even from afar. But they're all pretty. So I don't know. I voted for number one. Well, most of them are on number one. We've got one on number three. And so will the real Wilma Schneider. Schneider, please stand up. <laughs> Thank you, woman. Let me find out about your friend. Number two, you're adorable. What is your real name and what do you do? Thank you. My name is Ann Deneen. I'm with Pan American Airways in their group of charter department. Hey. Number three, you got somebody to hold over there. Peggy was for you. What is your real name? What do you do? My name is Marie Jackson. I'm an executive receptionist in New York. Well, Wilma, it's a tough challenge that you've taken on. I wish you luck. And imposters, thank, thank you all very much for being with us on Teletruth.